Welcome to our fourth Agile Seminar on Attendance. Today, I'm joined by Executive Principal Andrew Murphy from Northern Education Trust. I think it's fair to say that Northern has been on quite a journey since 2017, going from being a trust of some concern to one where Ofsted's MAT summary evaluation this past year concluded that the trust had transformed its schools, leading to monumental improvements that are life-changing for pupils and staff. Northern have developed a unique approach to attendance that has meant that its schools have achieved significant reductions in absence and persistent absence rates, despite being located in areas of high deprivation. The results at Northern were so impressive that it began piloting a free program of support for other schools and became the first attendance hub in the country. And the DFE is now planning a total of 32 hubs. Andrew very kindly agreed to join us today to tell us about Northern's approach to attendance. So Andrew, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna hand over to you. Okay, thank you. Can I just check you can hear me? Yeah, brilliant, okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. So my name is Andrew Murphy. Um, I'm an executive principal for Northern Education Trust. Um, what that means is I oversee three schools within the trust. And um, one of the schools I oversee is on the is on the screen at the minute, a school called North Shore Academy. Um, I was the principal there up until about two years ago. Um, when I talk today, everything we do as a trust, we, we're just over 25 schools at the minute, um, probably equally, equally weighted between primary and secondary. But everything I'm going to talk about today, we do as a trust. I might use not, uh, North Shore as the example, but everything we do, we, 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 we do as a trust. So, okay. Um, the aims of the, of the next 20 minutes, uh, if you like, uh, to introduce you to the Attendance Hub, um, provide some context around North Education Trust, um, and then an overview of, of, of our staffing structure, which will help support attendance. Um, I look at some of the inclusion practice to support attendance. And then just looking at what a, a typical day in the life of attendance kind of looks like for Northern Education Trust. So um, uh, the attendance hub, um, like Samira said, the, 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 there's, there's um, the news this week that there's going to be 32 new attendance hubs. Um, we've been in attendance hub now for about two years. Um, it came out of a discussion with our CEO, Rob Tarn, and I think it was Nadine Zahawi at the time, around about poor school attendance. And we were having some struggles within the trust as well. And it was a... It was decided that North Shore Academy would be a lead school, an attendance hub. Um, it would be a partnership of equals. Um, it would be to discuss attendance and the issues that we're having. Um, it would be a collection of similar schools. That was really important. So um, it was schools with similar deprivation, similar pupil premium. Um, we, we wanted to have a revolving chair. Um, and we and I say this now, but I said this then, but I, mean, I, I say it now as much. We certainly haven't got monopoly on best practice. You know, we, we don't know everything. We have as many difficulties as, as other people. And... We're, 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 we've got problems in some of our academies at the minute with attendance and it's a constant battle to improve attendance. Um, when we created the attendance hub, we created a, a website and a password. And if you did want to look at it, um, the website's there. I think these, these slides are going to be emailed out later, but the website's there and the password is also underneath. Um, it looks a little bit like this. So if you go to the top right hand corner, um, if you click on attendance hub, um, it'll bring you to a page like this. and. There are about 11 videos, I think. Each of the videos are about three minutes long. They talk about our approach to different parts of attendance and anything that's spoken about within those three minutes. We, we've just put in a folder here our, I don't know, the letters that we send home to parents or the trackers that we use or um, an example of what a, an, an attendance meeting might look like. But you're very welcome to that if you want it. If you don't, that's fine as well. But it, it's there if you do want it. In terms of a little bit of, of, of context, I think it's probably quite important. Um, we're... Northern Education Trust, we go from, or well, we did go from Blythe to Bolton. Um, it felt like if there was a town with a B in, we had a, we had a school in it, but um, very north in the Blythe, and uh, we call it south in Bolton South, but um, we're onboarding a few new schools at the minute in Manchester, so we're going to go a little bit further south. Um, our, new, our CEO, Rob Tarn, took over in 2017. I've just put on the on the left-hand side there what the Ofsted judgments were when Rob came in and, and where we are now as a cluster of schools. As a family of schools, and we're, we're largely doing okay, and we're, we're starting to grow a little bit, but we're, we're heading towards 25, 30 schools at the minute. Um, in terms of the context, um, high deprivation, high pupil premium. We do have academies that haven't got high deprivation, high pupil premium, but largely, that there, there are a list of our primary academies there. You can see it's quite a similar context. And uh, Secondary academies, a similar story, Thorpe Academy, which is up in Newcastle, which is um, quite a low pupil premium from yours all the way to North Shore Academy, which is about 70% pupil premium. Um, what I would say is everything that we do as a trust, 
the policies and the procedures and the strategies we do with all of our academies. We don't have a different approach for an academy that's got less deprivation and one that's got more. So when I talk today, um, just bear that in mind. Um, our attendance process. So we have a consistency across primary and secondary. So it's the, exactly the same um, policy for both. Um, we have a philosophy that children want to attend school. And if there are barriers, then what are we going to do about those barriers? Um, we provide lots of support and challenge to our parents. Um, challenge probably more so at the spot uh, at the start. And then by the time we're getting to year eight and nine, they're probably quite supportive. But they probably don't um, welcome some of the things that we do and say in year seven, because we, we are very challenging. And then, um, and then when they understand how much we care and how much we want their children in school, like, they, they tend to come to us. Um, Multi-agency support. Um, we have a clear three-stage process, um, quite a high threshold of 97%. So we start our attendance proceedings for anything below 97%. Um, our attendance uh, policy links to our in, in inclusion uh, uh, processes and, and meetings, et cetera, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. And then just to say our attendance dashboards and dashboards are automatically generated through Bromcom um, and, and through the Trust Central team. It's attendance is an, uh, an agenda item on every SLT meeting. It's linked to praise. Um, we do a, a significant amount of staff training and, and we're quite relentless about it. And, and, you know, we understand that if children aren't in school, we can't safeguard them and, and they can't get the outcomes that they fully deserve. So um, th that was the hub and the context. Um, and I'm going to go on just to talk about some of some of the other things. So um, I didn't really know where to put this slide, but it felt like I needed to put it in somewhere. So I've just put it in here. I think what I would say is we've always had a battle with attendance. Um, even when attendance was good, we used to battle every single day. Um, and some of the challenges that we faced probably four or five years ago are, are still there. But for me, these are the new things at the minute. These, these, these are the big challenges for us at the minute. And I think probably COVID and working from home is something where we've got children who, who probably wouldn't have been off previously that are starting to, to, to become absent. And I'm a parent myself and my wife um, works in a school and I've got two children. And if, if, if either of our ch children would have wanted to, well, it would have been Pooley, it would have been myself and my wife being off school, I think now. Working from home gives parents the opportunity for children to be at home while they're at home. And I think that's something that we battle with. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the social contract, but I, I agree with what, what kind of come up in the press this week. And I think there's been a, a rise in the diagnosis of mental health. And I think that's another challenge that we, we're, we're facing as a, as a trust at the minute. I'm sure it's the same for everybody on here. So um, I think I thought it was important just to, to, to talk you through our staff instructions so you can see exactly how we approach attendance. Um, this is uh, a general staff instructor for, for a, a school of a thousand within the Northern Education Trust, so a secondary school. So uh, within here, you can see there's a vice principal for deep support. So we, we run the deeps within secondary schools. So we have deep support, which is attendance and behavior. We have deep learning, which is teaching and learning. And we have deep experience, which is uh, like data and exams and timetables. So deep support, which is where attendance falls under. So within here, you can see that there's a vice principal for deep support. There is an assistant principal for deep support. There is a SENCO. And then all other roles underneath here are, are non-teaching roles. So we have an inclusion coordinator. We employ a, a safeguarding and wellbeing officer full time. We employ our own EWO. We have five learning managers who are non-teaching heads of year. We have a PLC manager, which is a, a room I'll talk about. We have a bridge manager, which is another room I'll talk about. Um, and we have an attendance manager. So quite a lot of non-teaching staff um, which we need in the context to, to, to kind of support attendance. Um, the, 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 the two teaching members of staff there, which are the vice principal and the assistant principal, obviously they, they teach. So alongside that, we, we do something, um, we have something called the, the, the deeps and we have three deep roles um, within deep support. So the three deep roles that we have are an associate assistant principal, a developing leader and an aspiring leader. Now, that costs me as a principal or the academy uh, about £3,750 a year. And the, the role of the associate assistant principal is that there will be a teaching member of staff. They won't get any frees. They'll be seconded to SLT. They'll be paid £1,500 for the year. They'll put a high vis on. They'll get a walkie-talkie. They'll do all the duties. Um, and they'll be given a whole staff project um, to work alongside the, the vice principal and the assistant principal. And it'll be, they'll be, like I said, they'll be seconded to SLT for a year. It'll allow them to dip their toe in the water and see if SLT is for them, if, if, it's an, if it's an avenue they want to go in. But it just adds capacity and support to that SLT. Alongside that, also linked to deep support is we'll have a, a developing leader. So a developing leader can be anybody within the academy. It can be the PA, it can be 
a head of department and a, that's somebody that just wants to lead on a on a whole school project so it might be peer mentoring it might be anti-bullying it might be raising attendance amongst year 10 pupil premium boys it, it can be whatever and that costs a thousand pound a year we then have a, a an aspiring leader so that that costs 1250 pound a year and again that that's somebody that um, just wants to run with the whole school project so whilst we have those three people that are doing whole school projects that the vice principal and the assistant principal probably would have been doing what that means is it keeps the vice principal and the assistant principal out of the office so they're walking the building all the time they're trying to make sure the culture's right they're dealing with the, they're being more strategic they're dealing with attendance but i think the deep roles are, are vital within our schools they add capacity um and they also provide opportunities for for, for staff within the school so um I've, I've put in there and these slides will come out that's what the the um job role of a, of a deep spot vice principal is and i'll let you read that in your own time but just for a little bit of context in your own time and if you do want any if there are any questions at the end by all means i'll, I'll come back to this so um in terms of our inclusion provision to, to raise attendance um to support the most vulnerable children we have two um quite high level internal provisions um those provisions are called the bridge and the plc um just to say before i talk through either of those things that um any referral to the bridge of the PLC must come through the principal or the vice principal, and they come through a weekly meeting. Um, what we don't have in the academy is just um, like learning manager who pick children up and say, well, look, I won't put them in English today. I'll put them in the bridge because it just becomes unmanageable. So if any referrals are made in these two rooms, they come through the principal and the vice principal. Um, firstly, the, 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 the PLC, so it's our personalized learning center. Um, it looks like that. Well, it doesn't look like that. It is that. Um, we have a PLC manager who runs that daily. Um, the PLC is a, a six week placement. So children don't come in and come out daily. They, 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 the parents come in, we sign a contract and they go into the PLC, the personalized learning center for six weeks. Um, the children that go in the PLC are children that are a little bit disengaged, getting it wrong in lessons, where their attendance isn't great, where they're getting multiple exclusions. They'll come through that room um, on a the morning. They'll come in at the normal time. They'll follow the same uniform policy, the same behavior policy. Staff will go in that room on learning walks, um, but every morning they'll do their lessons. Now, lessons in our academy last an hour. In that room, the lessons will last probably about 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes. When it gets to lunchtime, the children in that room will work on the intervention that they're probably not getting right. So we might have the local PCSO, the local fire brigade, or local football club coming in and just doing some work around. It might be self-esteem, it might be target setting, it might just be anti-social behavior, whatever it might be. Quite an important room for us. Um, the, the board at the back, which you definitely can't see, has some success stories on there, but there are some children that go into that room, really not getting it right, really disengaged, really poor, poor levels of, of attendance. And after six weeks, they don't come out, they don't all come out and start behaving and everything's perfect, but we get quite a lot of success. What it does mean is that children that probably would be excluded multiple times or um, have poor levels of attendance or, or engagement are actually coming into school. Um, so quite an important room for us, that one. Um, another room that we have is, is, is the bridge. Um, more schools have a room like this. It's a, it's a bridge between home and school. So whilst the PLC is for like disengagement, if you like, the, the, the bridge is more around um, emotional well-being. It might be someone who's got some mental health issues. It might be someone who's had a bereavement in the family. Um, it's not a full-time uh, provision. So when children come into the bridge, they'll be in there um, on a part not on a part time table within school, but they'll only go to the bridge for certain periods. It might be periods one and two, and then they'll go to periods three and four. We don't, it, it doesn't become a, a, a crutch if you like. We don't let children be in there full time because they go in there, they get a cup of tea, they get a slice of toast. The lady in there who runs that room for us is amazing. Um, and they can they can become really um, tied to that room. So it's, it, it, it's a part time provision. But again, um, we offer that to try and improve attendance within our academies. Um, in terms of the, 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 the policy around attendance, um, we have a no excuses policy um, and, and we believe that all students want to attend school and it's just around uh, breaking down the barriers to ensure that um, we can get them to attend school and, and we look at the child as sometimes in groups but largely as individuals. Um, the punctuality and the attendance policy is, is to promote good attendance, to reduce absence, um, to ensure that all children get a full-time education and we, we act as early as we possibly can. So that threshold of 97% to address any patterns of absence uh, and we do it by making it everybody's responsibility within school. So as a principal, um, when I was a principal, that the, oh, the, I, attendance was at the forefront of everything I did. I was constantly asking the question, what's attendance? It's nine o'clock, where are we? How many people are out on home visits? 
And then more recently, we, we've made it an appraisal target for all staff in the academy um, to improve attendance with certain individuals within, the, within their uh, tutor groups. Um, in terms of the, the, the daily structures, so in terms of what happens within our academies on a, on a daily basis, I'm just going to go through two or three slides around um, uh, what, what exactly happens. So um, we have an attendance cover manager who arrives to work and they're employed from 7.30. The first thing that they would do on a morning is they will listen to the voicemails from parents and they'll then start coding registers. If there are any voicemails from parents that um, haven't got medical proof, they'll go down as unauthorized and will phone back immediately to say, look, we understand that your child's not in school, but it's going down as unauthorized unless we get medical evidence. If that child is on an attendance plan, it would also, the, the conversation would also include, and just to let you know, they will fill the plan and they'll be put on the next stage of the plan. Um, we explain to some parents that the reasons for absence aren't acceptable. Um, and we start, and the attendance manager will start to compile a list of, of, of children who aren't in that need a home visit. Um, whilst that's happening, um, when children are coming in um, and, and staff are taking registers, uh, the attendance and cover manager within the first, after five minutes will run a list of all children that are absent, along with the list of children that are, we already know aren't absent, they'll start to do clustered visits. So they'll, within Stockton, the, the, the North Shore Academy, um, uh, probably 99% of our children within five miles of the school. So we broke the town down into five different areas. And rather than having like a head of year go to five different areas and look after their year group, we cluster the visits so that that head of year will just go out to that postcode and they might knock on a door for a year 11 and a year seven, but the visits are, are very much clustered. Um, if staff don't complete the registers within five minutes, we do keep a tracker. Um, I've got to say it doesn't really happen, but where it does happen, it would be just a supportive conversation around your register wasn't done. Um, why was that? Um, you can't do your first day response and it just halts the academy when registers aren't done properly. So we do place quite a big emphasis on making sure registers are, are accurate and completed within, within the first five minutes. Um, within the first 10 minutes of the school day, so after 10 minutes, the children are settled in lessons. Um, that's when the, the, the learning managers, the attendance manager, the EWO um, and the safeguard and wellbeing officer will be out doing home visits. So they'll be on clustered visits at that point. They'll go out in pairs. Um, on the days where you look at attendance after 10 minutes and, and say, oh, my word, it's, uh, it's very, very low. Just everybody who's available within the academy goes out. And that might be the PA within the school. It might actually be the vice principal. But we just get as many people out knocking on doors as early as we possibly can. Um, we prioritise where we go. So we, we go to, 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 to the vulnerable students, to year 11 and to the I've, I've, I've written their easier wins. Probably what I mean by that is children that we think we can get back into the academy. Um, Staff always leave a calling card um, and, and there's always a, a supportive but a challenging conversation. So um, I think home visits are kind of a, a twofold. One is that we want the child in school that day if we can. But two, if we knock on the door um, that day, we're more likely to get them in the next day. Um, and where we do have students that have very low levels of attendance, we do a home visit daily, but we, we don't do them at nine o'clock. You know, I think parents are quite savvy to, to who's knocking on the door at certain points in it. It, it, it might be that we know they've got younger siblings and we, we, we do a home visit at three o'clock when we know they've got the primary school for the younger sibling. But we visit every child that's been off on that, on that day, every single day. But we we prioritise where we go. Um, if children are off with a social worker, we always make social workers a know as, as well about the children that are off that day. Um, in terms of uh, tracking and monitoring, um, by nine o'clock, if uh, as a principal, I would be on the radio saying, can you tell me what the attendance is today? Can you tell me what the PP is, what the different year groups? I would want to know how many people are out on home visits. Um, by half nine, uh, obviously registers have closed. Now, again, I would want to know a little bit of an update about how many children we've got in in the last, it would be from two hours from half seven to half nine, how many children have we got in? Um, and when learning managers go out, um, they, they will come back and at the end of the day, they'll come into the, the head's office and they'll write on the board what their attendance is, how many home visits they did, and they'll leave on the, on the principal's desk just what happened at each door. So I, I spoke to mum, couldn't get them in, just showed me they'll be in tomorrow, we'll follow up the next day. Um, the, the board in the office, um, probably quite a small thing, but I found it quite valuable. Um, half two to half three was probably that hour before my meeting started at half three, where when people were coming and updating the board, it would give me the opportunity to just challenge and support. So when learning managers were coming in and writing, you know, it's 92% today, I did 17 home visits, but I never got, I would be then saying, did you get any, you know, do you need me to come and do a home visit with you tomorrow? Do you want me to send a senior leader out with you? How, how, when was the last time we've seen that child? And it's just them informal conversations that can add so much value to, to, to your attendance. 
Um, yeah, I think I've done that slide. Um, in terms of uh, the attendance policy and the plans, so we have four, um, four, four, four categories. Good attenders, so anybody above 97%. Um, regular attenders, so 90 to 97%. Um, persistently absent, anybody below 90%, and then severely absent, anybody below um, 50%. Um, I hope you can see that, but that's the, that's the flow chart that we use. So that if a, if a child has 97% attendance, then that's fine uh, and above. As soon as they go below 97% attendance, we put them onto an attendance managing plan. So the attendance manager will send a letter home to parents. They'll get the child out of a lesson when they're in and just say, look, just to make you aware, you're on a four week plan. These are the targets. Um, and that goes to parents, it goes to the child, and, and they know they're on a four-week plan. They've then got four weeks. If they're in school for four weeks, they come off that plan. If in that four weeks they get, they have a day off, they then move to the learning manager plan. So that's the point where the learning manager doesn't ring home. They Well, they do ring home, but they ask the parent to come in to school to discuss the attendance along with the child. Uh, and again, it's you filled your attendance manager plan. We're now going to put you onto the learning manager plan. It's a four week plan. This is what you need to do. This is the support we're going to offer. And if they pass that four week plan, they go back to the attendance management plan. If for any reason they have a day off, um, an unauthorized day off, they go to the EWO monitoring plan. So our EWO, again, would pick it up, would invite parents in, would invite the local authority in and a social worker in. Um, and just to say, look, you've now failed two plans. Um, the next thing would be would be passing it to the local authority for for, for a referral. Um, and again, all of those plans are, are, are four week plans, um, and 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 again, you move through the plans depending on whether you pass or you fail. In alongside that, we have a, a a weekly attendance meeting. So if you imagine all of the names of the year group down the left hand side and across the the the, the, the colours across the top there. Um, we just go into a meeting, we have the uh, EWO, the attendance manager and the learning manager and the, the, the VP for deep support will sit around a table. It'll start at one o'clock. It'll probably finish about five. Learning managers come one after another. So they don't all sit in the room. They'll come at half an hour at a time and they'll just go through every child in their year. Tell me, has he been off this week? What were the reasons? What are we doing? Where are they on the plan? What do we need to do? Do we need to consider putting them in the PLC or the bridge? Do we need to look at whatever it might be? But we have that meeting every single week. Um, if we get to the point where um, we need to make a referral, um, it's in our first letter and it's in our last letter, but we do refer to local authority for for, uh, for fines, if you like. But we as an academy have done all of the paperwork. So the EWO will have done it all. It will just be handed to the local authority, signed by the principal, and it means the local authority can get on with it. What we did, because we work across lots of different local authorities, was we looked at the, um, the tolerance for, for, for making referrals and we made sure our policy hit them all. The, in terms of the local authorities. So if you think a child's probably been through 12 weeks um, of attendance proceedings, mum's been in, we've met with the child, we've met with a social worker. So we don't get a lot of kickback off local authorities as to say, look, you haven't done enough with this child just yet. Um, alongside that bit, we do the nice bit, um, the rewards. So we don't give out um, lots of like sweets and tellies. And in fact, we don't give any of the stuff like that out, but we, we, we do give out lots of praise around, award, uh, around attendance. So we recognise good. We recognise excellent attendance. So you know, 100% attendance. There might be a, a chocolate with a the principal. There might be just certificates. We'll just do something really nice. We'll write termly letters home. But equally, when children are making gains in attendance, so if a child goes from say 70% to 90%, we recognise that as well, and we try and do as much as we possibly can. And that might be through a, um, attendance hero bags or just like half half, half termly draws or um, the brag that we do. Um, and then I think. I certainly haven't got enough time to talk about this, but I think the systematic approach that we do at NET, perfect timing. Um, the systematic approach that we do at NET has, um, certainly helps, but I think probably attendance is more around creating a culture where students want to attend. And I think in the, in, in the communities that we work in, we've got to work really hard to create positive relationships with parents and children. And lots of the things that we do around, you know, evac experiences and trips and proud events and um applause moments and just duty in as far out from the school as we possibly can um so that we can catch we, we can catch children four or five times and speak to them before they come and have a massive impact on attendance um i've written some of the things that we do for the most vulnerable there but I'll, i'm just going to pick one out um the way we think about things that we do as an academy so for example christmas jumper day just before um 
before the break. Um, we, we we do a Christmas jump today. We try and raise money for charity. Um, but largely what happens is lots of children who can't afford Christmas jumpers don't come to school. So as an academy or as, as a trust, we went out and bought hundreds of Christmas jumpers. We asked Asda, we got loads of freebies actually. Um, so North Shore had 200 Christmas jumpers. We bought loads of tinsel and glue. And two days before the Christmas jumper event, we said to the children, if you want to wear a Christmas jumper, come back, make it with us. We'll put some music on, have some hot chocolate. But you've got to wear the one that you make. It just meant that the most vulnerable children didn't didn't stay off because they never had a Christmas jumper or come to school thinking someone's going to have a nicer jumper than me. So we, we certainly have a different approach to kind of, I think everything we do, we always think, well, what impacts, what are the unintended consequences of doing that? And I think the Christmas jumper example is probably a, a, a good example of um of what we do and then just just finally um we um at, at, at North education trust we do run something called access days which is where we open the academy of visitors and just talk through everything that we do and, and give them everything that we do for free if anybody is interested in coming to a visit uh, to an access day we have them at different different academies but the next one is at north shore academy and i've just put contact on which is christine and you'd be more than welcome to come. thank you very much andrew no problem at all thank you